it's the best behaved dog in Cabo now. He's at, he's at my feet right now. What was the turning point? The shock collar. All right, we're live <laughs> on Facebook. So good morning to the Facebook. Good morning, people. everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, and you let me do. Here we go. Oh, before we do that, Claudia, let me just set the timer and <laughs> welcome to Cobbleville News and Community Update in English. This is Corey Riggs along with Claudia Velo and you are listening on October 17th on Sunday evening or you have been watching us over the weekend on Facebook Live as we're recording this on Thursday. Claudia, how the heck are you? I'm good. Any more coffee, but I'm doing really good. I just filled up my coffee cup. So and look if, at the it, size of that cup. Go to it's Facebook a huge and one. It it's a it's a those They didn't pay us for this ad, by the way. But mm -hmm. um, you you could pay us if you guys want, because I always I have a lot of your cups, <laughs> and I love I love your coffee, and I love the maybe coffee we shop. can get sponsored with with product like free coffee so and uh, the guayabate little empanadas. Which are the oh, best? <laughs> yeah, those are those are good. Those are far away from my diet though right now. So, but but that's all right. I think, and I know a lot of nutritionists, and and Isabel will probably say it's <laughs> not right. But if you're dieting, like serious dieting, I think everybody should be allowed one cheat day every so often. I'm not saying a I, week, but every so often. I I 100% agree with that, and I just I'm headed to Chiapas today which i'm wow. so excited about i've i've been to palenque but i've never been to what is it called san cristobal de las okay. casas mm -hmm. and there's also a canyon by is it tuxla tuxla where we're tuxla, flying into tuxla yeah. Gutierrez, yeah. so we're and staying el canyon there del sumidero, that's the canyon oh. and so it's been kind of rainy so maybe the lagoons because there's a, there's a group of lagoons that are called yeah. the lagunas de montebello yeah and when the days are really clear, you can see different colors in each lagoon. And it's really wow. beautiful, really. I mean, I, even if you don't get to see all the colors, it is really beautiful. I, I cannot wait. And uh, I, will, I will bring back pictures. We'll show to the Facebook audience in the next show. Yes. And also I have, a little, I have a little anecdote about Charlie. So many of you, if you follow the show, you know about my dog, Charlie, who has been a problem child for a while. And he, we've had, we've had a trainer on this show. He's had more training than any dog, but he's, he's half Jack Russell and half Pitbull, at least. I mean, we, we got him on the street, so that's what they think he is. And that personality combination is a tough personality. So he, and he's very energetic, but finally the trainer gave me the right thing and I didn't want to do it. It's the shock collar. He's only had to been shocked six times. And I promise you this is the best behaved dog he stopped going after other dogs he comes to me when i call he sits when i say sit he goes down when i say go down and i didn't even i don't even have to have the collar on him anymore mm -hmm. it's it's amazing so Good. if if you have the right trainer and the trainer showed me how to use it it's very important that you know how to use it but i'm so excited because i have such a well-behaved dog now it makes your life so much nicer because you can take him with you and it's worth it. And Giovanni, the gentleman, we're going to have him on the show. He's he was the dog trainer. He's incredible. So just shout out to him, and we'll we'll have him on the show sometime. But I know we have some news, Claudia. We do have some news that are brought to us courtesy of Gringo Gazette. We Cabo Mail has been collaborating with Gringo Gazette, and if you're following. The daily news, there's usually some snippets with good news also provided by Gringo Gazette. And here is this week's summary. Uh, something that it's actually very convenient for US citizens beginning, it started on October 1st. US Mission Mexico is now offering mail-in passport renewals with online payment for US citizens who are residing anywhere in Mexico. You need to go online and find out if you're eligible. And I'm going to put the link on our Cabo Mill News uh, Facebook page, but the link is mx.usembassy.gov slash passports. 
And you can also call the Consular Agency for Los Cabos. The local number is 664-748-0129. Again, that number is 664-748-0129. That will make it very convenient to read. Wow, what a so, service. That's great. I'm so yeah. happy to hear this. Great. I love good news. Service. Yeah. Also, I know people talk about how uh, Mexican money sometimes look play money because it's all different colors and different sizes. And, and uh, we're going to have new 20 peso being in distribution in commemoration of Mexico's Declaration of Independence. Central Bank of Mexico has released a bill that is rec recalling the moment when the rebel army entered Mexico City 200 years ago on September 27. <clears throat> and uh, it is, uh, the front presents that image and the back is, uh, it has birds and the rebel army and a crocodile and also um, natural wealth with an image of the Siancan Biosphere Reserve in Quintana Roo, which is very close to Cancun and it is considered a natural world heritage site. So brand can new 20 peso bill. You won't be confused I? because currently um, the Benito Juarez is on the 20 peso bill and the 500 peso bill and both bills are blue. So it can be a little confusing. Ooh. But it, I, now it's going to be completely different and there will be no more confusion between the 20 peso and the 500 pesos. Can I ask a quick question, Claudia? Mm -hmm. a little and I know that you know the answer to this. So the the Independence Day in Mexico is September 15th. Am I right about that? Right. Is it the 15th or 16th? The 15th in, at night, that's when the commemoration of El Grito de Dolores, which was the call that Miguel Hidalgo made to rise and, and I, to I, seek independence. I lost you for a second. Um, so yeah, it's the night of the 15th of September is when, when it is commemorated. And then the 16th, we have a parade. So um, I think Corey's internet just died, but he'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> and but actually talking about the 20 peso bill, this one commemorates what happened 11 years later. The war for independence started in 1810 and it ended in 1821. So that's why it's 200 years this year. And we got Corey back and I've explained all the differences <laughs> between September 15 and the actual commemoration of the Declaration of Independence, which happened 11 years later in 1821. And you're on mute for it. There you go. I'll have to watch the show then to get that explanation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yes. I love the internet. And then, All right, I'll let you continue. Um, finally, um, La Paz, the capital city for Baja California Sur, made it to Time Magazine and it, as it was chosen as one of the world's greatest places in 2021. Time Magazine said, the Mexican seaside city of La Paz is two hours north of the popular Cabo San Lucas and its busy resorts, but with its laid back vibe, it might as well be a world away. Visitors can take a relaxed stroll on the Malecon, a three mile long pedestrian walkway right along the Sea of Cortez, lined with ocean inspired sculptures and open air cafes. So yay, La Paz, congratulations wow. for being chosen as one of the greatest places for 2021 by Time Magazine. And thanks to Gringo Gazette for providing us with really good news. Yay. Anything else, Claudia, from Gringo Gazette? That's it from Gringo Gazette. And in other news, we all know that Pamela came and went and rained. It, it rained some, we got some wind, but Overall, it, it didn't cause any damages, so all good. Do you think it's the last hurricane that we're going to have to deal with? I think so. We're starting to see the cold fronts pushing through, and the water is a lot colder. Um, there's people that have actually seen whales, and whales, no, they don't, they don't come if there's going to be warm water. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Very I good. think it's the last one. But don't, Look. like I said, I'm not... 
I don't have a crystal ball, so I'm I may be mistaken. <laughs> Well, very good. Well, we're very excited this week to have Gay Thatcher from Amigos de los Niños, who Yay. is also who is also married to Lu Luis Herrera, the most interesting man in the world, if you remember that interview <laughs> that we had, <laughs> who, who owns H Restaurant, my favorite restaurant, and very excited to have Gay with us. And I know the Gay's got a lot to share with us about Amigos de los Niños, lots going on. And Gay, just welcome back to the show. Thank you. Nice to be back. So, so what's been happening? I know, I know since last time you were here, you had a dental clinic last time we spoke and, and we even, we even uh, interviewed Greg, I, I can never pronounce his last name, Staltis. Salty. the P is silent, Salties. Salties. <laughs> and uh, great, great report on your dental clinic that we had. And this was about, I don't even know, six months ago now, five months ago. I, I don't remember. I think it was in February. Okay. Oh my gosh. Time is Although it flying. Might have been, I don't know. The, the, the pandemic has addled my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's addled all of our brains, but Gay, tell us what's been happening since February. Well, we've had another dental clinic. Uh, we're still doing COVID protocols, so there's a few less kids being taken care of, but we're, we're on our way. We have another one coming up uh it starts on the 22nd which i believe is next week isn't it yes and uh we'll have four days of clinics mm -mm, getting mm -mm. back in in the flow of things uh we'll take care of about 20 kids a day we were before the pandemic hit we were doing 40 kids a day so little by little we're we're getting it back we do that so we can just use two of the chairs of the three chairs so that the kids aren't close together and just uh, keeping up with the protocols. But we're so happy to be back back in, in the flow of things again. And then right after that, we have an audiology clinic, which uh, we already had one, I think, since the last time I talked to you. But they just took moles. The moles are the part that goes inside your ear. And because it had been almost a, a, over a year, since they had taken them, kids grow, and believe it or not, even the holes in your ears grow. So, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, we had just one mold taking clinic, and now we'll be able to give out the hearing aids at this one. And yesterday we had the redhead, not yesterday, oh. day before yesterday. I told you my brain's addled. <laughs> um, the redhead party which has been going on every year for about, well, over 20 years. Mm. The Redheads are Sammy Hager fans. And even though Sammy didn't come, I think he didn't come. Sometimes he shows up at the last moment, he but didn't. I think he didn't come. He didn't come this year. Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all a lot of his Redhead fans were here. They come every year, so they didn't want to stay away this year, especially since everybody's vaccinated or not, or however they want to do it, but take their, have their swabs before they travel. Mm -hmm. So we were up at Chacas in Pescadero to, Pescadero to celebrate that. Great place, I love Chacas. Isn't and that cool? I know nobody's cool ever gotten so many bands to perform. I didn't even know we had that many. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. I think and Red Voodoo was the name of the band on, on the 12th. And was that um, a benefit for 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 the foundation? Yes, it's it's always been a benefit. Uh, usually, we've done a a bay cruise, but we didn't do that this year. <clears throat> Excuse me, just the party, and uh, we have raffles and silent auctions, and everybody pitches in. And uh, yeah, and it, it, thank God we had it because certainly enough has been canceled this year. <laughs> And last year. Okay. Uh, well, that's great news that that you actually got to have a, a, the fundraiser and the party. Yeah. And that it's been going for so long. How fun. Yeah, it was fun. So, so, so did Sammy Hagar show up to the Redhead party? No. No. He no. was in Catalina Island. He changed oh. his bash this year. He, he had it in Catalina Island. Oh I know gosh. a lot of big fans were hoping that he would show up last minute as he has done before, but mm -hmm. um, not this year. Very sad, very yeah. sad. 
And and um, so go ahead, Claudia. Okay, I, wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to ask about the the auditive clinic. Um, uh -huh. What what is what does it entail, and how advanced can can the auditive impairment be for children to get help? Because some children are just hard of hearing, but some are completely deaf. And I don't know if it's still PC to call them, to call people who can hear deaf, but- Well, we can go with not, hearing impaired, but I, I believe deaf is, is a medical term. So I think we can still use that or okay. we can use hearing impaired, whichever. Mm -hmm. um, deaf is usually used to, to when there is no hearing and hearing impaired is when there is still a little bit of hearing, which right. when we can, we can help that along with hearing aids. So the, the children come in, if they're really young, we ask for a uh, test to be done, which is uh, evocado. I'm not sure what that is in English, mm -hmm. which means that with under anesthesia, they give a test which sees if there's any brain activity um, to, uh, with sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once we have that, that will tell you if they're uh, totally deaf or if they do have hearing in one, one of their ears or both. <clears throat> And after that, they come in, and if uh, it's just hard of hearing, they do an um, an audio test, the little beeps, and mm -hmm. the child either holds their finger up or he, if they're younger, the audiologist teaches them to stack boxes on top or to drop, you know, the, those rings on a cone each mm -hmm. time they, so it, it really becomes fun for the child and, and they're able to respond. Right. And after that, if hearing aids are uh, what is recommended, they, they fit the hearing aids and, and get them to the right uh, volume, show the mother how to fix it or show the child how to fix it or show both. Mm -hmm. so, so because with hearing aids, it, if they're up too high, it's not just like voices or music or something nice. You're getting the input in, you're getting cars, you're getting sirens, you're getting everything so it can be kind of jarring yeah. to the systems if they're not adjusted correctly and they come back we give them batteries and they come back uh once a year to be checked to see how they're doing uh sometimes something stops working and and mm -hmm. our audiologist and ent specialist who have been coming for 28 years now to los cabos mm -hmm. to do this twice a year um get everything ready to go. Wow. I think we're going to be taking care of around 50 children this time because of the lapse. Wow. Yeah, yeah. COVID no. definitely put a, a stop on so many of these things. Yeah, and, so many things. And, and this has really been alive. sad for hard of hearing kids because some of them undoubtedly have been out without hearing for a while. Mm -hmm. No, the difference in your life when you can't hear, I, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of things I've read is that not being able to hear is even worse than not being able to see in, in how you can get around. And our, our sense of hearing is such an important, important thing. And so the difference that you're making in, in these kids' lives, Gay, it's just, it's amazing. And I know you've been doing this for years and I love to come by and, and, and the, the gentlemen that come and help you, I know that uh, just amazing, amazing people. Yes, Dr. Mike Rensing and audiologist Jim O'Hara, and they are amazing. Considering many, you're my age and we all manage to stumble around <laughs> still. <laughs> How many years have they been doing it? 28 years now, now Amigos de los Niños. We celebrate 30 years this year, but it was a bad year to celebrate 30 years. So we'll celebrate 31, hopefully, <laughs> this next year. And they've been well, having I, 28 of those years. Well, I think it's I think it's important for our audience to understand how how important Amigos de los Niños is and has been to this area in in the foundation world. It's really one of the first foundations that was set up appropriately, that has been operating appropriately, that does what it says it does and, and all the things and really has laid the groundwork for the other foundations to come. And so so and I know that Gay, how long have you been executive director, Gay? Who 
I've been there for for 17 years. Wow. So and I know you've really you've really taken it forward and 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 you and I have personally worked on things together over the years. We know I was with Los Cabos Children's Foundation and now we continue to work on things and we can we'll get into some of those things that we've worked on now and what we're looking for to do in the future uh, after the next break. But we have about a minute left and maybe just talk a little bit about where your facility is, Gay, and can people come and, and see or, or call you and come and see what's going on when, when they have the dental clinics yes. or the audio clinics? Yes, we would be happy to, to receive visitors. Uh, we're located in Colonia Aurora, which is out behind the, the Cabo San Lucas delegation. Uh, we're in Cabo San Lucas. Um, it's a, a house that was donated to us, um, I think almost the 30 years ago. Um, it's a two-story house on the second floor. We've uh, built out a dental clinic, uh, pediatric. This is pediatric dentistry, uh, usually kids below 12 years old, uh, mainly working on baby teeth. So um, we have our clone clinic there. They have little uh, missionary, mission style uh, setups. It's not the big old things that, that come out from all over the place. The, these dental units, as they're called, were built to take out into the outback or the jungle on mission trips. <laughs> so we just set them up next to our chairs and they're very easy to use and all the dentists love them. So that's what we have at the office. And you can come see the dentist when they come. There's usually three dentists, three hygienists, and one assistant to do the sterilizing. And uh, before COVID, we would see 40 kids a day when, um, wow. When, wow. when we had the clinics going on. It isn't open all the time. It's only open when the dentists come. Well, we're, we're going to take we're going to take a quick break, Gay, okay. and we'll be right back, and we'll continue this discussion on the break, and then we'll have you back for the next segment. Stay with us. Okay. All right. Sorry, I, my internet is bad today. I don't know what's happening. Well, I, I'm over. doing mine on the phone because I know mine will. It's the clouds. We have such good internet. Internet, the clouds. Disrupted. <laughs> <laughs> the internet gets scared with the clouds. No, it's bad everywhere. I, I, it's very. I, I just keep getting the, the notice. Your, your connection is just unstable. But you're not. You froze, Corey. But I, the recording is coming through. All right. So I hope it will okay. be good. Yeah. Good. Well, I wanted to share, and maybe we can share with this. I'll, yep. I'll share. I'll share the part. If you can let me share, Claudia. You can share. Let me uh, show Gay what we're working on because it has to do with her, and she hasn't seen this yet. Oh, surprise! <laughs> A surprise! I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I'm going to get to your part of it. Let me just let me let me get to it here. And and I'll show it. You have us on pins and needles, Corey. Exactly. I'm thinking it can't be a video. My my youth in my youth there weren't videos yet from cell <laughs> cameras. No. <laughs> it was Thank God. <laughs> Just a second. I'm trying to get to the spot before I show it, and it's it just stopped. <laughs> okay. Oh my Does gosh. anybody know if if we're ever going to get any improvement on internet? I a lot of like, areas have been got have been getting like the updated fiber optics, but I don't think it's okay. everywhere. So who knows? No, it isn't. It isn't where I am. No, and it's not where where the particular spot where my apartment is. It's still on copper, so 
I, even if I wanted to pay more for faster internet, it would make no difference. Yeah. So yeah. We've got fiber optics where my house and the office are, but it, it still doesn't work. Yeah. It's in, okay. It just comes in and out and in and out. It's very frustrating, especially nowadays when we're doing so much online. Okay, exactly. so here we, here we go. I'm going to take this off. And you look like a disc jockey. Let me get back to Zoom. <laughs> I'll click control. And get my preferences so you can hear it. Okay. This it's is pretty video. cool. I promise. And thank you for all of you being patient out there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just, I want to show you, this is a little preview of something we're, we're working on here. So that's the preview. Uh, that's <laughs> nice. cool. But I want I wanted to I wanted to show you the part with Amigos de los Niños and also share with the audience what it looks like, what that dental clinic looks like. So thank you. It's it's hard so isn't to that explain pretty cool? sometimes, but when you see it, it all comes together quickly. Yeah. And I think that setup is not as threatening for children as the traditional exactly. dentist's chair, which looks like a tortured device. Exactly. Even grown ups don't like it. <laughs> I know. I, I didn't I I didn't like going to the dentist until I found Dr. Marta here in San Lucas. Yeah. She's she has a light touch yeah. and she's finally after 50 years managed to get me to go to regular dentist visits. <laughs> you open your mouth. <laughs> yeah, because it, a lot of people <laughs> have this issue with, with dentists and you only go when you're in true pain. And it's not until you find the right fit for, for you that you realize it's a lot easier if you do preventive, which is mm -hmm. what makes you know, the work that you do at the dental clinic is so important because you're really, you're saving these children from so much pain that so many we're people all, have endured. We're, all we're also, also teaching them exactly that, not to be afraid of the dentist. Believe it or not, these are pediatric dentists, so they're used, so used to working with kids and there's no crying going on unless there's a very small child. Right. And that it, a small child who is worried comes in, all they do on the first appointment is just count their teeth. And that's a big deal. And they get a prize after and everything. So yeah. actually there's some of those kids that enjoy coming to the dentist. They run upstairs with a big smile and oh. are all ready for it. Yeah, no, it, it's wonderful because people who like me have been I hate to use the word traumatized, but have had bad experiences where you instantly on, on an unconscious level link pain with dentists. Um, then you stop going and you only go when you're in really bad shape. And of mm -hmm. course, all those procedures are painful. And even if they numb you or do whatever, it's painful. So to, to, teach children at an early age that it doesn't need to, it's not that way. You know, if you do it properly and you take good care, then it's not that way. It's so, so valuable because yeah. they will have, they will prevent issues rather than just deal with, with them. Exactly. You've, you've explained the second half of what, aside from just taking care of the teeth, that's exactly what they're trying to instill in these kids is not being afraid of the dentist and and going every six right. months or, or once a year at least at least yes yes mm -hmm. cool. so let's, let's go back because this is a lot of good stuff that could be on the radio <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about this okay we'll repeat it <laughs> we might right, we'll, have to repeat it we'll repeat it again okay so um we're going back <clears throat> Oh, 
Welcome back to Cobb Bill News and Community Update in English. You're listening to 96.3 FM Cabo Meal. It is Sunday, October 17th. And you can follow us always on Facebook at Cabo Meal News. You can see this program and you can see all our past programs. I highly recommend all of them. Aren't they great, Claudia? All of our shows are great. And this one is especially biased, great. Yes, they're great. <laughs> <laughs> this one is especially great because we have Gay Thatcher from Amigos de los Niños, and we have lots of good bonus material that came over the break. So that you can only see if you follow us on Facebook and watch the entire show there. We actually showed the clinic that Gay has at Amigos de los Niños. And once you see it, you really get a feeling for it. And we invite you to come out. We'll put a link. You can contact Gay or go to Amigos de los Niños, ADLN. I don't remember the exact um, web address, but we'll put it on, on the show. You can go check it out and you can go visit it. It's something that you should definitely get involved in if you're looking for a charity that you'd like to sink your teeth into. I could not recommend Amigos de los Niños sink your teeth into. Look at that. Look yes, at that exactly. pun. I would. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that pun. So, so that wasn't even planned. I just love it. So <laughs> it just worked out. But you can sink your teeth into Amigos de los Niños. It's it's an incredible charity, one of the best around. And we are so happy at the El Dorado and Chileno Bay Foundations to be a big supporter of theirs. Discovery Land Company Foundation has also been a big supporter, and we are very excited to do that. I know Los Cabos Children's Foundation, other foundations around have always supported. And Gay, so great to have you. And you guys were talking a lot about some things over the break that I felt like, okay, we need to talk about some of that on the radio, just in case people are still not following us on Facebook, <laughs> that they are actually just listening on the radio. So you were talking about the importance of why these dental clinics actually work. So Claudia, maybe you can ask your question again that was that was so right on as always. All right, so first you have to go to Cabo Mill News and watch the, the little clip that shows the bed. And my comment was that the way they, those beds are set up are less threatening than a traditional dentist chair, which actually to me looks kind of like a torture device. <laughs> and was mentioning that that it's so great um, to have children in an environment that's non-threatening uh, because then they learn that it's okay to go to a dentist, unlike some people like myself who link, who used to link uh, because I've changed that, going to the dentist with pain. And then when, when you're in pain, it becomes really a horrible experience. But these children, they look so calm. And, um, you, you know, it's, it's amazing how they almost seem to be enjoying it. And so the question for, for Gay is, how is the children's experience? And I went on to say that that is the, uh, aside from just fixing the children's teeth, that is the other side of having the dental clinics. Children learn to not be afraid to go to the dentist. They learn or oral hygiene. They learn that the teeth need to be taken. And the whole family learns this, not just the child. Mm. So when, if a small child comes in and doesn't really have anything too much wrong with their teeth yet, Actually, the dentist will just lay them down and put their their headlamp on them and say, now I'm just going to count their teeth. And that's exactly what they do. They count their teeth and they ask the child if they think that's the correct amount. And so it's just a conversation and they get a little prize and a toothbrush afterwards. And the next time they come back and they're fine. Very little crying goes on at these clinics. I remember when uh, Dr. Salty said to me, who is a member of our, our uh, board of directors, why don't we do some pediatric dental clinics? And I thought, well, that must be like traumatic to me, yeah. if not to them, <laughs> but it's not at all. The children almost don't cry. Um, th these, these dentists are so good. They work for children all day, every day. So they're experts at it. That is so great. And, and you're saving them a, a life of fear because really realizing <laughs> that you can go to the dentist for preventive care 
rather than when you're in true pain and have exactly. a big issue, it's, it's life changing. And, and it's fun to play with the, the kids also if they're uh, looking worried, I just go up and say, you can do this because moms are kind of not good at this because the child <laughs> has a tendency to cry with the mother where they won't with other people. And you can do, oh, you look like you're brave and I know you're just going to be fine. And they come out and they're so proud of themselves. It, it's, um, what do you call, uh, self-confidence. Uh, they also get a lot of self-confidence from going to the dentist and coming out with a smile on their face. Sure. So we're really, dental clinics don't sound that um, fun or interesting, but actually they are at Amigos de los Niños. We'll have to go check them out, everybody yeah, should go and get involved. And speaking of getting involved, I know that, that you get a lot of support from, from foundations and, and other mm -hmm. entities. But mm -hmm. how can people, just a regular person, get involved and support the work that you do? Um, to, be, to be a donor, you can go to our webpage, which is adlncabo.org. And there's a big old donation button there, of course. And uh, if you would like to just come see what's going on, our uh, phone number is... Let's see if I can remember it after a year of being in the pandemic. 624-144-3195, which will, you'll, you guys will put that up also. And uh, we welcome interested people to come in and, and, uh, and see what's going on. Uh, of course, all our kids are um, low income. Most of the people are like gardeners or, or maids in the hotels. And uh, these kids honestly wouldn't be going to the dentist if uh, if it weren't for, for Amigos de los Niños. Before the pandemic, we were seeing up to 800 kids a year wow. in these clinics. Uh, this year, we'll probably come out to around 500. And uh, we're opening a new location in, in San Jose so we can ser serve more children. Uh, our Dr. Saltis is... Um, is retired now and he goes all over the world and speaks to pediatric dental congresses. So he has an infinite pool of um, volunteer dentists who want to come down here. They're usually from Canada and, and the US and some Mexican dentists have come. Uh, they, it's, for them, it's a great experience too. Uh, they, they're always, so happy to have come down and they're always so surprised that the kids are all so well behaved and it, it, it's really everybody gets something out of it. it it's a rewarding experience for everyone that's something i have seen in in foundations that do the work that really do the work it seems to be that it is gratifying for everybody for those who, yes. who work, for those who volunteer, and obviously for those who get the benefit. But, uh -huh. but it is, this type of work is a true win-win for everybody. Uh, everyone. So many times we've heard, you know, it's even those who are working and are spending the long hours bending over the chairs and doing the work, uh -huh. they feel like I get more than, than I give. And, and that's mm -hmm. such an amazing test, uh, testimony of, of yes. what the work. And, they and say that very often. And I would say that Gay, Gay is a person that's always been on the front lines and really out there doing the work with her team. She's got a great team as well. I, I, had, the, I had the honor of being on the board of Migos de los Niños for a couple of years. And I've worked with Gay since 2008, basically, and just have seen what she's done. And it, it, that leads me to my next question, Gay, because you've been, obviously, you've been around in this world of foundations in Los Cabos for a long time. What do you see as the biggest need in general that needs to happen in Los Cabos from, from NGO work or, or foundation work? Oh gosh, so many things. Um, well, I think basic health is still a big issue. I, I don't think even for children and adults, I think, um, 
Teaching, teaching people to be aware of uh, diet. Of, uh, I know with the COVID crisis, we saw how many people who suffered uh, from being obese had a really hard and terrible mm -hmm. time with COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I, teaching people uh, about preventive medicine, basic medicine, um, nutrition, Gee, I don't know. Now just getting the kids back to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, seeing, I, I think now we need to be paying a lot of t attention to what kind of psychological things have happened to children over this this year that there's, or more than a year that there has been no school because it's not just learning. It's socializing. It's being away from mom for a few hours a day. Mm -hmm. It, it's mm -hmm. just uh, mm -hmm. so many things have happened. I think uh, child psychology, even mm -hmm. psychiatry could be important. What else do we need? We need everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I, 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 we I would don't need. <laughs> I would I would argue with you because you've taken care of a lot of needs over the over the past. I mean, c cancer treatment exists here because of the work that you've done and those Cabo Service Foundation. But really what you started Amigos de los Niños really brought cancer treatment to Baja California Sur. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that that you were heavily involved in getting the Crete here when we got the Crete into La Paz, which took care of a lot of children, still takes care of a lot of children with disabilities. That was an amazing, amazing. thing. Um, the heart clinics that you put on, along with Corazon del Niño, it takes care of a lot of, of children that were otherwise not taken care of. Uh, you were heavily mm -hmm. involved in the bus project that we now have, have that takes kids up to La Paz too, which is where I'm coming to what I think the need is. And you can either agree or, or not, <laughs> not with me on this, but takes it up to, to their specialty medical treatment that's only in La Paz. And that is something that we need in Los Cabos is those specialists and a location that kids can go. Yes, it would be nice if we had those specialists here. The uh, public health system is very set up to, they, they are the way they are. The the um, the third this third stage, or I don't know what you'd call it in English, but the specialty hospital are usually always in the capital of the states. Mm -hmm. So therefore we have the pediatric oncology in La Paz and um, most things, anything, any, almost any complicated surgery you need, adults or children, it would be in La Paz. And the Crete also went there because mm -hmm. it was the capital of the state. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it will take to get that here in Los Cabos. It certainly would be nice to have it a little bit closer, but then with that beautiful bus, I want to get it on it someday and just ride around in it. <laughs> it's a great bus. <laughs> uh, it's, it's it, way it looks like a um, a Mercedes. Is it a Mercedes? I, I, <laughs> I, didn't, I think I didn't mean to, to, to name a brand, but <laughs> a, a nice bus. <laughs> it's a fancy yeah. one. <laughs> The, the, the next one is actually going to be a Mercedes. So we're working on a second bus and that we've seen that the need is so much. This first bus is full. I mean, it's going every day. And if you go out in front of Fresco, you can see it. It's beautiful. You can see all the people that were involved. And, that, and that's something that's happened too, is this coordination between the business community and the foundation world. I, I really think such great energy has happened here in the foundation world. Yeah. that We've been able to bring people together to solve community problems. Well, and it's the same people that are working in the big companies and certainly the, the hotels and uh, real estate that's around. It, it, it's your maids and your gardener's kids that are using what the foundations and organizations are doing. So it, it's a win-win for everyone. Yes. And, and speaking of, of, of the issues with dealing with why things are set up in, in the capital city, Everybody knows that there's more infrastructure in terms of public services and state and, and federal funding services, funded services in, in La Paz. 
Um, but something that really sets Los Cabos apart is, is the way that the private sector comes together and, and really supports the work of the foundations. And, uh, and mm -hmm. I mean, I, every, as, as I was listening to Corey, it's like, yeah, I, I've heard of that, I've heard of that. And, and I know that you, you gay have played such an important role into really creating this, this um, altruistic mentality in Los Cabos. I, I, I don't think that the community is aware of how much work has been, has been done behind the scenes, but uh, thank you and on, on behalf of the community because thank it's you. amazing. I remember the conversations 20 years ago when when everybody had their idea and had their way to do it and they thought that was the right way. And the progress that we've seen in the two decades that I've witnessed mm -hmm. where now everybody comes together. And proof of that is the work that was achieved through the Alliance. I don't think that we could have done that 20 years ago. And so thank you to your efforts um, for, for bringing everybody to like a similar mindset in terms of altruism and, and helping the community. And we didn't even we didn't even mention that Gay was the volunteer coordinator for Cabo San Lucas, which was a huge job. It was unbelievable during the alliance. And just to remind everybody, we gave out to 97,000 families over 218,000 dispensas. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And and it was Gay incredible. was a huge Gay was a huge part of that in, in what she did with, with um, uh, volunteers. Because we had to have volunteers. There was no way to do that otherwise. Mm -hmm. But, and, and Gay, I promise this is not a, this is your life episode, by the way, as we're, as we're. <laughs> <laughs> somebody comes so, through, the, through the curtain. <laughs> somebody comes through the curtain. Hey, guess who we have with us today? No. That, not, not, and I wanted to see someone. <laughs> 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 but but that's 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 a great I mean just 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 thank you so much Gay. What what else what else are you working on and what else would you like people to know about Amigos de los Niños or or what projects are coming up for you? Well, and on the theme of, of working together with other organizations, I think that's truly the future of nonprofit is uh, creating alliances with um, other like-minded organizations so that you can accomplish more. Amigos de los Niños has uh, taken care, care of kids with heart, uh, congenital heart defects ever since uh, we first started. Of course, they were sent to the States. They were sent to uh, Culiacan. And now with uh, we have allied ourselves with Corazon Ni Nino. We just had a clinic where 18 children received uh, open heart surgeries, catheterization, diagnostic and reparative catheterizations and ab ablations, which is when you have arrhythmias and they electrically with a catheter shock it into behaving itself, rather like your dog. <laughs> it all comes back down to, was it, good? <laughs> it all comes back around to charlie yeah. that's how oh important God. charlie our dogs are important to us so um we, and we thought we wouldn't even be able to have it this year but er everything came together hospital hmas h plus was uh right there supporting us as they have through the seventh this is the seventh this was the seventh um Cornada, they call them here, clinic, heart clinic. Yeah. yeah. So uh, a lot of work has gone uh, along with that. Um, Corazon de Nino does a wonderful job on doing well, that. Well, it's a, it's. We it's also an... got we Go got ahead. one of our uh, little boy who was four years old went up to um, Omaha uh, mm -hmm. with Los Cabos Children's Foundation to have his first heart repair and has a pacemaker. And we just replaced that pacemaker in this, uh, in this clinic with a state-of-the-art three-cabled, three don't ask me to explain that, um, pacemaker. And he's, I think, mm, 10 or 11 now. 
and he's not very talkative. He's one of those shy kids. And the next day I said, how are you, Tonito? And he just looked at me and he goes, I feel so good. (laughs) 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 It just instantly made him feel better. I think we hadn't realized how, you know, tired and, and not always good he had felt. And with the new one, he's just ready to go. So it's nice to be able to pick up where we left off with one thing and, and keep going and keep, because when you have heart problems like that, you may need attention your whole life. So it's nice to be, at least while they're still children, to be able to uh, keep taking care of them. Absolutely. Well, I kind of lied when I said that no one was going to show up on the show. And so here we go. We have the most interesting man in the world. Luis Herrera is here. <laughs> he, he, he showed up. And I just he's better I, looking than that. Well, I know he's better looking than this, but but I mean he's got the same cool look. I mean, this guy's cool. You gotta admit he's cool, but Luis is this cool. And you you can see Luis. You first have to go Facebook Live to even see what I just showed. But you can see the most interesting man in person if you go out to eat at H Ache restaurant in San Jose. That's, that's, you can. And, and you will have the best time. And if you ask him any questions, any stories, I, I'm getting on personal stuff now because we're r- wrapping up the show, Gay, and I have a few questions for you that are personal now in your personal life about- Oh, oh my goodness. And gotcha. <laughs> well, first of all, first of all, I I'm just have nervous. to share. I want to share with the audience that Gay is in a book club with me. And it's been the coolest thing because we've been reading books that you would never even think about reading. And Gay, can you tell us, what the last book is that you recommended to everybody? East of Eden. Unbelievable. This book, it's the best book I've ever read in my life. I can't believe what a great writer. Now it took, I drove up to Arizona and back. So I was, I listened to it on audio. So it's, it's like 24 hours of audio listening. It's which, a big book. It's a big book. But what's sad about it, Gay, what I have to say is well, you and I have been done with this book for a long time. And I just, I'm just letting everybody know that's in the book club out there. You better start reading because we're forgetting the book. We are forgetting <laughs> the book and it's been months. So I don't know if we should pick big books like this, but, but I did notice behind you, Gay, and you can see this if you go to Facebook, Cabo Mill News, the book Alive. Have you read that book? Yes. Yes, of course. Can you, it's unbelievable. That's the book where the soccer team, I can't remember where they're from. Was it Colombian? And no, I think they were Argentinian, weren't they? I don't, I don't remember. I do you don't know? remember their nationality. Claudia, Claudia knows everything. Claudia, do you know? Claudia doesn't know. She's not coming off mute because she doesn't know. So, but she usually <laughs> knows these things. So it, it's, it was a, it was a soccer team that crashed in the Andes, right? Yes. And then they, they, the whole, the, the they survived, but oh, they survived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sobrevivientes de los Andes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they, yeah, that's what it is in Spanish. And, and they had to actually eat other they, members they of the team. They were from Argentina. Yeah. See, yeah. Claudia didn't know that. I knew Claudia. They were from Argentina. I thought I, 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 you on something she didn't know, but. <laughs> I didn't know the, that that was the name in, in English. Of, of and, the book. and back to the theme of the show, Alive is a book that you could really sink your teeth into. <laughs> Very bad joke. <laughs> Oh, oh my I'm glad you're going on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's long enough. It's only four. It's only over the weekend, so we'll we'll, we'll see. But I, I'll sink my teeth into Chiapas. We'll see what happens. So you will okay, it. you will love it. <laughs> I did see that there's 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 alligators or crocodiles. I don't know. There's something in Chiapas. There there's that of that species of of animal. Some sort of big reptile. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. is. I, There's well, a lot they even of have animals. those in Vallarta now. They have I them in Vallarta. Get them here. I don't need anything else scary in my life. No, we're too deserty for those guys. They're, we're not. We're not the right environment for them. Thank goodness. So, <laughs> so, so, so this 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 uh, this show is 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 going downhill fast. So, what it was. <laughs> I, am I being blamed for that? No, it's all <laughs> me. I'm, I'm raising my hand. It's all me. It's all me. But we have a couple of minutes left. Anything else anybody wants to say about anything? Claudia, we'll start with you. 
as as she laughed nervously. <laughs> no, I want, I want to hear more about the book club because I, I haven't been you in a book club in like twenty five years or longer. Well, you know the, what? the reason the reason they thought this was such a big book is because they have chose things like Huckleberry Finn, oh. and what was our first one? Uh, it was another small book. There, no, no, no. Fahrenheit. Oh, we, re we read Fahrenheit. Oh, four five one. one Fahrenheit. Or Four fifty one. Four five one Fahrenheit. Yeah. That's and we also we, we also read uh, what was the note? Robinson Crusoe, amazing. Robinson who has Crusoe. who that character has has Los Cabos roots. So who Laura Bueno, who has also been on this show, she has written a book about that. That I can't remember the name of the person. Claudia, do you know? <laughs> the name of the person that Robinson Crusoe was based on. Uh, no, I don't. I don't remember. Oh my gosh, I'm so disappointed. But anyway, we'll move yeah, on from that. I don't. <laughs> well, and then quite I think a few that, books. Now looking back on it, The Hobbit, my favorite. The, we read Hobbit, the Hobbit. The Hobbit. The I, Hobbit I, is I awesome. The Hobbit on audio. That's an I'm, 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 so, we're surrounded by Hobbit fans in the book club. <laughs> are audio books considered cheating or no? Or are they well, not? they better not be because that's how I do it. <laughs> I listen. And the, no. and, the, and the best thing about the Hobbit was you had you had like the 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 actual voices of the different characters. You had one guy reading it, but man, what a great job doing the voices. Yeah. So it's um, actually the guy that played Gollum that read it. Xerxes, I think his name is his last name. Wow. I, can't, I can't think of his name. Gollum and Lord of the Ring and the Hobbit. OK, we have run out of time. This has been a wonderful show. Gay, thank you for all you do. Thank you for, again, sinking your teeth into this show so fast. Uh, it didn't work that time. That thank last you, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, you need to go on vacation. <laughs> Claudia, so fun again. We will see you next Sunday for a great show. We're going to either going to have Marisa Comella from Los Cabos Children's Foundation, or we may have Gabby Gutierrez. We're still confirming from Banca Mifel. So we have people on the deck ready to, to be involved. And we can't wait to see you next week. Perfect. And that's it. Catch have you next one. time. Bye. Bye. We're still on Facebook Live, so. And we're going to go off Facebook so Live. Be good. Bye. Bye. <laughs>